In this video, I'd like to continue talking about factoring polynomials using complex numbers by looking at an example problem. And with this example, we need to find the mistake in someone else's work. And problems like these are useful for helping identify mistakes in your own work. So in this problem, Marcos tried to rewrite x to the fourth plus x squared minus 12 as a product of linear factors. And this is his work to do so. So we're starting with this fourth degree polynomial. And you can notice that this is a special type of fourth degree polynomial where we're missing the cubic term and the first power term. So when that's the case, we can use substitution to factor this. And the general strategy that I like to apply to these types of problems where we're finding the mistake in someone else's work is to work it out myself and then compare my work to their work. So let's make a little bit of room and we can work through factoring this ourselves. And we're starting with x to the fourth plus x squared minus 12. And this, you might notice, looks similar to a quadratic. In fact, if we rewrote x to the fourth as x squared squared, then it might be more obvious that we have a type of quadratic expression here. In fact, let's make a substitution. We can say that u is equal to x squared so that we get u squared. Let me actually remove that parentheses. We have u squared plus u minus 12. And by transforming this using this substitution, u is equal to x squared, this now becomes a quadratic equation. And we can factor this using the techniques that we've learned for factoring quadratics. So let's start by writing this as a product of two binomials. And if this didn't work, then we can factor this using the quadratic formula. But let's see if this does work. Since we know each of these will have two terms, the first term in each would have to be u, since if we re-multiply it out at the end, u times u gives us u squared. And this term and this term here have to multiply to negative 12, but add to the coefficient on u, which in this case is positive one. So let's think about which numbers multiply to negative 12 and also add to positive one. We could have minus 1 and 12, minus 12 and 1. We could have minus 3 and 4, or minus 4 and 3. And we can stop there since we notice that minus 3 and 4, if you add those together, you do get positive 1. So we can factor this as u minus 3 multiplied by u plus 4. But we originally started with the variable x, so let's plug x squared back in for u. And by doing that, we would end up with x squared minus 3 multiplied by x squared plus 4. And at this point, if we go back and compare our work to his work, we can see that through step one, we ended up with different solutions. So there's already a mistake here. In fact, notice that compared to our work, the signs are switched here. We had x squared minus 3 and x squared plus 4. And an alternate strategy, rather than working it out yourself, is that at each stage, you can just re-multiply this back out and make sure that you get back the original expression. Since if we carried out distribution here, notice that x squared times x squared, that is x to the fourth, we would get minus 4x squared and plus 3x squared and minus 12 at the end. And when you recombine these, you would get minus x squared rather than positive x squared. So it looks like the answer to our question here, where did he make the mistake, is in step one. Now, if we wanted to, we can actually factor this further, just like he tried to do here, but he did it with this mistake in mind, so his final answer will be incorrect. But let's actually continue this so that we can factor this as a product of linear factors, where essentially we have x to the first power in each of these. 
And the key idea is to recognize that we have a difference of squares here and a sum of squares here. So remember the formula for a difference of squares. If we have a squared minus b squared, we can factor this as a product of two binomials where we have the first term minus the second term, ignoring the squares, and then the first term plus the second term. And when we have a sum of squares, we looked at in a previous video that this can be factored using complex numbers. In fact, we can rewrite this as minus negative b squared. And just remember that since i is the square root of minus 1, i squared is negative 1. And in that subtracting negative b squared, we replace that negative b squared with just i squared times b squared. And then we can apply the difference of squares formula to that. But the result that we get is we get the first one minus i times by the second one, now ignoring the squares, and the first one plus i times the second one, again, ignoring those squares. So let's apply both of these formulas and we can further factor these. And since three is not a perfect square, we could rewrite this as x squared minus the square root of three squared, since when we simplify this, square root and square cancel and we get minus three. And over here we have x squared plus two squared. So plugging everything into these formulas, we would get here just x minus root three multiplied by x plus root three. And over here, we will now have imaginary numbers. We would get x minus two i multiplied by x plus two i. And to verify this, to make sure that we factored everything correctly, we can just re-multiply everything out. So pair them off and then use distribution to actually multiply them out. You would do the same thing here and you would end up with what we started with, these right here. And then of course you can multiply those back out to end up with the original fourth degree expression.